Greetings. Welcome to our worship video for September 20th. I am Pastor Lorenda Hoover of the Glidden, Lanesboro Community, and Lowerville United Methodist Churches. We are on our second week of our New Normal series. Today's New Normal topic is washing and sanitizing. Today also brings a change to the format and plan for our online worship videos. Worship is intended to be the work of the people, not just the pastor. It is my hope that this change will help you participate more deeply in worship and strengthen your relationship with God. To that end, and for some logistical reasons, this video includes only the scripture reading and the sermon. It is intended to be used with the order of worship that was emailed or mailed out, and it can be found at our website, gliddenumc.net. There should be a link to this order of worship in the comments for this video or in the introductory paragraph. If at all possible, please begin your worship with that order of worship, praying the prayer and singing or reading the hymn. When noted, return to this video and listen to the scripture and the sermon. Then return to the order of worship for the prayers of intercession, the final hymn, and the dismissal with blessing. For now, please pause this video, begin with the order of worship, and play this video when it is time for the scripture and the sermon. Our scripture today comes to us from the book of Exodus. It's part of God's instructions to Moses about the worship life of the Israelite community while they were in the wilderness that also affected their worship life in times after that. Hear these words from Exodus chapter 30, verses 17 to 21. The Lord spoke to Moses, Make a copper basin for washing along with its copper stand. Put it between the meeting tent and the altar and put water in it. Aaron and his sons will use it to wash their hands and their feet. When they go into the meeting tent or approach the altar to minister and to offer a food gift to the Lord, they must wash with water so that they don't die. They must wash their hands and their feet so that they don't die. This will be a permanent regulation for them, for Aaron and his descendants in every generation. Years ago, while I was still in seminary, I did a summer doing clinical pastoral education also abbreviated as CPE. My CPE program involved serving as a chaplain at Northwestern Memorial Hospital in Chicago with other CPE students. Because one of the hospital's specialties was caring for women with high-risk pregnancies, the hospital had an extensive NICU or neonatal intensive care unit. Since we were almost certain to be called to the NICU several times over the course of our service in CPE, Part of our orientation included instruction about proper hand washing before entering the unit. There were special sinks with foot controls instead of hand controls that we were to use, along with one-time use scrubbing sponges preloaded with soap. I no longer remember how long we were to scrub each area or the specific techniques, but I remember that there were rules for such things and that we were to scrub all the way up to our elbows. Washing our hands before entering the NICU required thought and care. It has only been this year, with the emphasis on hand washing as a way to reduce the spread of COVID, that I have given as much thought to hand washing as I did that summer. Once again, I'm trying to pay attention to making sure that I'm washing long enough and thoroughly enough. It's become part of the new normal of life during the pandemic, along with keeping an eye out for hand sanitizer when I'm out and about to use to protect others I encounter. We know that washing our hands frequently and well can protect us and protect others from not only COVID, but a whole host of other diseases. There's a clear practical use for hand washing. But for Christians, for our Jewish siblings, and now, no doubt for other religious traditions, washing is also a faith practice. When viewed in that way, hand washing can be an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. We can trace that importance of washing at least as far back as Moses and the Israelites in the wilderness. In our reading from Exodus today, God instructs Moses to have a copper wash basin made and set up for Aaron and his sons, that is the Israelite priests, so that they can wash their hands and feet before entering the tent of meeting or approaching the altar. There is to be no shirking of the responsibility to wash. God warns that failure to do so may mean their deaths. I will admit, that seems a bit extreme to me. The death penalty for not washing your hands? On the other hand, sometimes hand washing is about life and death. 
The serious hand washing protocol at the NICU where I did my CPE was a life and death matter. The infants in the NICU typically didn't have a functioning immune system, and a germ that would give a healthy adult like myself a cold could have killed one or more of those babies. Similarly, COVID can be deadly for some folks, and so passing it on is a matter of life and death, or avoiding passing it on is a matter of life and death. Now that doesn't seem to be the issue with Aaron and his sons as they enter the worship space. But nonetheless, God sees it as an important, serious matter that they wash before they enter. My sense is that the washing that Aaron and his sons are commanded to do has more to do with their spiritual state than with their physical state. It is a reminder that they, like all of us, get spiritually grubby on a regular basis, and that without care and attention, that spiritual grubbiness can spread to others, affecting them and affecting our relationship with God. Sometimes that grubbiness is caused by sin. Sometimes it's caused by the worries that distract us. Sometimes it's caused by simple inattention. The command to wash before entry was an opportunity to pause, to recognize that spiritual grubbiness that affects all of us, and to rely on God's mercy to wash them clean as they prepared to intentionally enter God's presence again. This sense of washing physically to remind us of the need to be washed spiritually shows up frequently in the scriptures. It's part of numerous regulations about ritual cleanliness in the book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy. It's present in Psalm 51, the psalm of confession that King David offers up when he realizes the great sins he'd committed and the psalm that we use so often in Lent. It's present in the baptism that John the Baptist offers to prepare people for the coming of Jesus. It's part of why Jesus washes his disciples' feet at the Last Supper and why he commands them to baptize as well as teach and preach. It's a central aspect of our baptism theology. One of the opportunities our new normal affords us is the opportunity to see frequent hand washing and sanitizing not just as a physical necessity, but also as a spiritual practice, to use it as a pause in our day to reconnect with God's mercy and grace to present ourselves before God, to have our spiritual selves cleansed and renewed. We have the opportunity to make the moments when we wash our hands a moment of prayer. There are a multitude of ways to do that. Depending on how fast you say it, the Lord's Prayer takes about 20 seconds to pray. Some folks have found praying the Lord's Prayer while they wash their hands to be a powerful practice. Singing a verse and the chorus of Jesus Loves Me is another possibility or some other favorite hymn or a scripture text. If words aren't so much your thing, you might focus on the feel of the water and the soap, or imagine that Jesus is washing your hands as he washed the disciples' feet. Any of these are good, solid spiritual practices to engage in as we wash and sanitize. If you are already using the moments when you wash as opportunities for prayer or reconnection with God, I commend you. Keep up the good work. I'd also encourage you to share how you are doing so in the comments below and or in conversation with your friends over the course of the week. If you haven't been doing so yet, I invite you to find ways to make those times of washing and sanitizing spiritual times when you reconnect with God and your faith. Use one of the prayers or practices I mentioned today or try others you've seen or heard about. Feel free to experiment with different approaches. What works for you as a good spiritual practice as you wash? Whatever your practice in hand washing, I hope that you experience God's grace and God's invitation in your life this week. Amen. Now I invite you to return to the order of worship for the rest of the service, and I will see you again next week.